Welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? A weekly video podcast features creatives, writers, and readers when we come together to talk about books. I am your host, Karen E. Osborne, author of four novels and counting. I am so glad you're here. I think you're going to enjoy our next guest. So I told you that you were going to enjoy my guest today, and I know you will. I love thrillers, and this is a thriller writer. This is Chris Bauer. Hey, Chris. Uh, how are you, Karen? I am great. I am great. So I'll tell you just a little bit about his latest book, Cradle, but he's going to tell you everything about the series and his other books. Chris has written nine novels. He's a thriller writer of nine novels. And his latest, Cradle, is book two of the Mass Maximum Risk series. And here's what one reviewer wrote about Cradle. Another whip smart thriller from Chris Bauer fast-paced and tightly plotted from the opening sequence until the last, Cradle will have you hanging on for dear life. I can't recommend this book highly enough. So aren't you intrigued? I am. Yeah, it's giving me uh, chills just hearing that, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and rightfully so, right? Rightfully so. So let's start with Max Fend. Let's start with your protagonist. Tell us a little, before you tell us about the book, tell us about him as a person and what are the things you really like about him? What do you get a little frustrated with him about? Or you wish he'd work on? Tell us about Max. So Max is, uh, we'll say he's a wealthy playboy uh, in his 30s. Um, he's the son of a, a, a uh, a very wealthy billionaire who owns a, an aerospace company called Fend Aerospace. Uh, Max has come across uh, initially in the prior series, and I'm I'm taking this series over from another author, New York Times bestselling author, excuse me, uh, U USA Today bestselling author uh, by the name of uh, Andrew Watts, and um, and and that character was his character for two books. He and I came together for the third book and co-wrote a book called Air, Air Race. And then the fourth and the fifth books, uh, he gave me free reign to be able to uh, do what I wanted to do with those novels. And um, um, Andrew Watts is a, a former uh, helicopter pilot for in the Navy, uh, an awful lot of aerospace and, and, and uh, uh, aircraft information, uh, which has persisted through these, these novels. So Max himself uh, is... On, on paper, I should say, to the world, is viewed as somebody who is not taken seriously because he he is uh, some, he, he he spends his money, uh, he gets around, he enjoys really he enjoys a lot of people, um, and um, and what what he has done though is in his background, coming right out of college, uh, he was recruited by the CIA because of his father's. Uh, his father's background in, in aerospace. Uh, so Max is in and out of the CIA sites on a project by project basis. Um, and we have him in these two books as being uh, pulled in by the CIA, the first book being Cobalt. We'll talk about that later. Uh, the second, this one being Cradle. And he's being pulled in by, by, by the federal government via his connections with the CIA and the FBI because he has, he has friends in the FBI. To, uh, to assist in a project that uh, has uh, very significant uh, uh, dealings with, um, with the NASA program, the uh, NASA's Artemis program, which is uh, going to the moon. And um, so that, that's the premise of Max. On the, on the front end, he's, he, has, he has a girlfriend who he, um, was, their relationship was reinstated during the uh, the first novel that I had doing doing the co-author work with with Andrew Watts. Uh, and they are now pretty much a couple. Um, not uh, marriage isn't on the horizon, not just yet, but they're a couple. and she is a she brings with her some very significant uh, hacking tools. Uh, so she is clearly clearly a partner. Um, 
she's somebody who does do very, very well in these in these series. As really very much, and even a partner with him, even though he is our our protagonist. Wow! So so many questions that that brings up for me. So what was that like, going from uh, co-writing? You know, here was these, these books that existed, and this char these characters that existed that you had to, you know, they're not your characters. You had to like make them yours, and co-write, and then move forward. But what were some of the challenges there, or were there any? Oh, definitely, there were there were challenges. First, the the, the first book, um, the, the it's the title is Air Race. Uh, it's uh, um, and it is about an air race by with very wealthy uh, people who are taking uh, planes from um, their small planes, taking them across the, the, uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, and effectively, in, in a certain number of days, they have to arrive somewhere in the Middle East. But we won't talk about the book. Uh, working with the author, it was his storyline. He came to me with it. Uh, it was it was ironic because we're friends, uh, but it was ironic because he says, you know, Chris, I have this idea. Would you want to co-author a book with me? And he has a great following. I, my following is not nearly what his following is. And I said, well, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'm pretty, pretty up with that. Um, so we, we, there's so many capabilities online um, to, to, to work through um, Word and the, the Word, the Word uh, programs and just um, the review process, very, very simple. Um, it was, again, it was mostly, it was his story, but I played a very significant part uh, toward the end of the, uh, of, of that novel. Um, and, and I was very happy because, uh, because Andrew, if people were to look the book up, they will see that I'm, I get, Andrew is top billing. He of course is the, the USA Today bestselling author, but he gave me a significant amount of space on the, uh, on the cover. Uh, that was very nice of him. Well, it's not, I, I love James, pa James Patterson. He does extremely great things, but a lot of his, a lot of his books, the people who co-author books with him, they, they sit down the bottom and you don't really see their names. Yeah, exactly. You have, you have to look for them. That's not what we have with, with, with Andrew. Now the book was successful. Um, not as much as successful as the prior two uh, novels were. Uh, but I think people were just questioning whether or not they, you know, who is this guy who's co-authoring with, with, with Andrew Watts. Um, so, but it was successful when he came back to me and I was very, very happy to have him say, Chris, I'd like to see if you'd want to do a two book series. We'll, we'll have a spinoff series. This is really effectively a spinoff. Uh, and there wow. are reason, technical reasons why he, you have to have it be a spinoff um, because Andrew has an awful lot of books out there that he's done very well with. Um, so gave me a two book series. I was very happy to have that happen. Um, completely my idea is these, these two books able to use all of his characters, uh, a wonderful circumstance. He really was completely hands off through the process. Uh, the publishing company is Severn River Publishing, uh, and uh, they, they did a marvelous job. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Not sure if we're going to have a third yet. We don't, we don't have another idea, another seri uh, series uh, story lined up yet, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. So cool. That's such a unique story. Wow. I really like that. So um, th the current book, uh, Cradle, uh, what's, what's, the, what's going on? What's going on in Cradle? So, um, Cradle, I'll, I'll, let me let me start with this, and it's probably um, this this won't be telling too much. But I want what people will, will recognize as they read this book is that um, the first of all, it has to do with NASA's Artemis project, which is we're going to the moon. That's one one, one rather significant arm to it. Other rather significant arms will, will come to in a minute, but. Going to the moon, um, what we what we learned, what I learned through this process, where I was doing the research for this, and 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 I can't tell you where the story came, uh, Karen. You know the story. You're a writer. The story they just they just show up, and then you have to decide. You have to trust yourself. You can do something with them. So the this premise behind parts of this story, the the Artemis side, is that the uh, whether people realize or not, you know the you know the Earth's moon is. I'm quoting, it's, it's, it's 4.5 billion years old. That's, and it's, it was formed as a result of a, some sort of a rather large planetary object bumping into the, into the earth back uh, 4.5 years ago, a billion years ago. Um, what 
for a period of time early on in those 4.5 billion years, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 billion years ago, the moon had an atmosphere that could support life. And, um, and that atmosphere existed for in excess of 2 million years. Mm. So you put that in your back pocket as being part of the circumstances behind, behind this. Um, so the, the characters in, in the novel are of course, Max, you know, Ma Max Fend, who's the, he's, he's been pulled in uh, because he, he wants to work on the Artemis program. His aerospace company is very much involved in it. His father, who started the aerospace company, is, is sitting back now, letting him do it. He's still alive, but he, Max has got all the responsibilities. Max is a full-fledged billionaire. He gets to decide who they're going to spend, what they're going to spend the money on, and he's going to help them go to the moon. Um, his, his responsibilities are with cargo and trying to put together equipment that's going to get on the moon and get around the moon and deliver things so that we can have a jumping off point to go to Mars. That is the biggest reason, one of the bigger reasons why we're going back to the moon. So Max is out there doing his thing. In the meantime, we uh, this is all this is going on down in Texas and Florida, and 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 I ended up. What I have trouble doing, Karen, is I, I have trouble not staying. I, I like talking about issues in in a number of my books. I will end up bringing in, uh, um, you know, some things that are that are people are a little bit difficult in handling. And this one, because of the location, what I have is a, um, it has to do with the zero tolerance policy that was in place. Uh, back in the prior administration where uh, the undocumented in immigrants coming across uh, into the country were being separated. But their parent, if their parents were losing their children, these, these kids are still out there. There's probably a thousand to 2000 of them out there. And the, and that's what I have in the way of a significant character crossing uh, the Rio Grande. She's, um, she's only 10 years old. Uh, and it were, it's now, I know, and she's been, she's, she's been separated because she's come across with her uncle. Her father has not come across. And when that happens, the federal government will pounce and say, if you're not with your parent, we can't be, we can't be sure how you've gotten here. You could be trafficked. This could be, and, and it's very legitimate, a very legitimate uh, concern, but it, it, it gets blind, unfortunately, to a lot of circumstances. So the, she ends up being separated. Uh, she's sent to a sanctuary city. Uh, I'm from Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a sanctuary city. Um, she sent to Philadelphia. I'm familiar with Philly. And eventually, at some point, what she has run across is that um, a rather large uh, uh, drug czar in Peru uh, is has been captured by the U.S. And people, one of the people involved uh, in, in the capture happens to be my protagonist, Max Fend, who does an awful lot of different things in his spare time for the CIA and whomever. Um, when this, it's all over the news, when this drug czar comes in from Peru, um, our character, the, the teenager who's now 16, has a very significant grudge because she's from Peru, um, and he's from Peru, and she knows him. And because of that circumstance, she suddenly has decided, I'm going after him. Now, at age 16, what what can you do? Well, the story develops where it does. We we put ourselves in a situation where, where she can have a significant impact uh, in in what's happening to this character. Uh, this this oh. bizarre. So two such two interesting hooks with the going to the moon and and the drug cartel and that sounds really really exciting. That sounds awesome. We don't want to give too much away. We don't want them. we want them to buy your books and read your books. So. That is really cool. Um, it comes out in, in it comes out in, on October twenty second. So, uh, so this will be our discussion here is timely. We'll see how quickly the uh, the people are able to to respond to that to these circumstances. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, that just sounds like just like an excellent and exciting exciting book. Um, one uh, and then you have another book, right? You have another one coming out in May that we're gonna. We're going to have an interview later on, talk about your what it may, but just give us a taste, just a tiny taste of what the new one is going to be. Um, and and the, the date has been pulled up, I'm happy to say, because we like books going out earlier rather than later. So it's, yes. it's scheduled for, for the early part of April. So I'm, I'm happy about April, that. April, that's right. Um, so this one is, it's a, 
from it's a second book in a series. The first book was was actually published by Severn River. Now we, you know, there's, our, there's other publishers doing doing this one. So um, it's an it the character. It's an art heist and an art scam, oh. and it has my my main character in this is a a uh, female um, bounty hunter. Te technically, they they're called uh, fugitive recovery agents, but she's she's in her thirties. She's had some significant challenges on her own. Uh, she's former uh, trooper, police, uh, uh, Pennsylvania State trooper, uh, retired from from that environment, uh, went out on her own as being a bounty hunter. And what she's doing uh, is is uh, she she has a real problem because of what she's seen over her lifetime with um, I want I don't want to say with guns, not specifically guns, but she has to live and die with that with these instruments. This is what she uses for her living. But she is extremely upset about what assault style weapons are doing to the to the, the popu general population. So if she has in her back pocket, if she can ever find a way to put a dent in that problem, she, she's going to do that. She she she's now pulling in a person who's a bounty, who is a an art uh, uh, thief. He's an he's an, an art. Uh, um, he, he replicates art, sells it on the black black market, makes a ton of money, and she's pulled him in because he's a bounty. and And she listens to him, trying to plead his way out of this arrest. And what she realizes during the discussion, because she doesn't want to have him hear it, she's not going to hear it. She's going to turn him in. Uh, and that's it, done deal. She's going to collect her bounty, and that that's all. But he ends up mentioning that he knows high people. He knows a lot of people in high places. And he is very, he, he knows the person who is the, uh, the top executive for a major gun lobby. And the moment she hears this, and she also knows, and because he's involved with this person, um, there's, there's an art heist involved, um, it, there's an art scam involved, and, um, and she's going to end up not turning him in as soon as he needs to be turned in so that he can potentially help her. Now, I'm going to give you another part of this story. I'm trying not to. Another part is that there's a very significant char uh, uh, character in here who is from a marginalized population. Uh, it's a uh, transgender man. Uh, he's been in prison for for um, for 30 years for a crime that he didn't necessarily commit, but it's he's responsible for parts of it. Uh, and um, and and he. Uh, he is he's he when he gets released because he is getting released there's a murder of a number of people he's getting released because they thought the evidence was 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 there was a problem with the evidence um he has in mind that he's going to take his uh revenge on a current uh politician the person who put him in jail 30 years ago and but he can't own any guns because he's a felon so what is he going to do he's going to build one and that's where these things called ghost guns come into play. Right, right. And there, that's a rather wow. topic right now. So that that plays up against the other piece because they blend together toward the, the, the at the end of the book, uh, where there was a they completely bump into each other at the end of the book. Wow, this is very cool. You're hitting all my hot buttons. This is exciting. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I love them. I love them. So this is what are you reading? What are you writing? And can you tell us about any books that have influenced you as a as a writer, and any and, or as a or has influenced your life? Um, I've been asked this uh, a, a few different times, and I end up it, coming to one book that is a nobody would have ever heard of. Uh, it's a book called Chance. Uh, C H A N C E. It's a baseball book, um, mm -hmm. and it's written by a an author by the name of Steve Shillstone, S H I L S T O N E. It is the only book he has ever written that that I can that I know of that deals with baseball, and is not a fantasy or science fiction book. This is a book that is strictly written about baseball and about and I'll put in quotes the best shortstop ever to play the game, who has come to the narrator to say, I want you to write my story. Now, why is it that I like this book? It's hilarious. There are some, the characters in there are, are, are great, but this, the voice that he uses, it's, it's told in the first person, 
the voice that he uses in this, I just loved it. So there's that. I, I, I love that. Um, so I always, you know, I always look for, for voice first, but I do like twisty, uh, well-crafted plots as well. This is, is a, is a, it's a character study. It's less, less, less a plot driven story, more of a character study, but I love the voice that made it, he made a huge impact. I, I'm also, I've, I've read a, a number of Dean Koontz's odd, uh, odd Thomas's uh, mm -hmm. books. I love those. I, if that was a great, great premise. Uh, and, and, you know, we may be talking about what, what else is in my to be read pile, uh, in, in a little bit, uh, like for instance, what have I read recently? <laughs> yes. So let's let's just go there because we have to wrap this up. So tell me, what have you read recently that you love? Well, I, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum series. Now she mm. had Stephanie Plum is a bounty female bounty hunter. That is my character in the novel that's coming out uh, in, in next next April. So uh, I, I she you know, she's hilarious, great snark. Um, she's really fast, uh, and fast and, and just a witty, witty character. I also like, um, I just met a fellow by the name of Reed Farrell Coleman at a, uh, a convention in September, and he's a noir writer. He's got a great noir voice. His most recent book, I think, is he's got a series called Nick Ryan out there, and it's not, it's a police, uh, police procedural, but it's just not a common police procedural. He, he's an excellent voice. Mentioned a couple other ones. Um, uh, Sean Cosby, S.A. Cosby, um, he's somebody who has done extremely well, um, and, and he's got royal southern noir voice. Uh, his fame is shocking him as much as it, it pretty much has gotten everybody else by surprise. Great stories. And one novel, Razorblade Tears, which I have not read yet, had an has an incredible premise. It just was so good. So we want to look at Sean Cosby. Um, and I'll mention a couple, you know, Carl Hyacin for, for his humor. I love him. Uh, and, but I want to mention one thing that, that you should, you should know about because this has to do with your writing. Um, here's a, you know, I, I, there's a book out there by a friend of mine called, uh, his name is Don Swaim, S-W-A-I-M. But the book is called Jitterbuggin with the Renaissance, a jazz age epic. And, um, and I, I, I've, read this book. It's, it's hilarious. It's very good. Uh, uh, um, uh, and, and, and I know your, your true grace novel, uh, is, 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 is all about the Renaissance and, uh, uh people might want to, if they're interested in your books, they might want to look at, at, at this book, Jitterbugging with the Renaissance, a jazz age epic. Yeah. Well, my book is very sad. My book is not a fun, <laughs> true grace. It's inspiring. It's inspiring. But it's it's uh, its premise is a is a sad premise, unfortunately. On page four, something terrible happens. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. This has been so fun. Thank you for all your recommendations. Thank you for um, telling us about your and I also I love heist books, books about art heist and stuff. You've just like intrigued me. And I hope that Chris has intrigued you and that you are eager to read his books, Cradle, that is just out um, with this uh, with this show and going back to Cobalt or even going back to the earlier parts of the of the Max Fenn series. But yeah, show us. Here's Cradle. Oh, lift it up a little higher. Nice, nice cover. Excellent, excellent. So, I, how can people find you, Chris? I am at uh, my website is chrisbauerauthor.net. Uh, if you change the net to c o m, chrisbauerauthor.com, you'll actually get the landing page at the at Severn River Publishing. So, um, and, you know, that can be found either way. On Facebook, I'm C G Bauer, C as in Chris, G as in Jared, uh, or George, but it's not George. I'm on Twitter, it's also CG Bauer. On Instagram, it's CNT Bauer One. I'm also out there on TikTok as well, at Chris Bauer Author 101. And can they find all of those links on your webpage? Yes. Excellent. So you need to go to it, go to his webpage, read about him, look at all of his books. Um, please uh, be in touch with him, follow him. I hope you're already following me. And when you do reach out to Chris, please tell him that you met him on What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Until next Tuesday, 
Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.